Those of boldest blood and wildest of heart step forth. Take up arms and try with honor to land a blow against me. Whomsoever nicks me shall lay claim to this, my arm. Its glory and riches shall be thine. Should you land a blow, you must seek me out yonder, one year hence, to the Green Chapel, and let me strike you in return. Who is willing to indulge me in this game? The Green Knight, a fantasy role-playing game that is a tie-in between um, the movie coming out uh, by uh, A24 uh, and directed by David Lowry. Uh, and I've got a wonderful cast of characters lined up here. Uh, if everyone could just go down the line. Um, let's start with Alana. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'll be playing Alana the Noble. And um, I'm with a Strange Fate Graph crafts and we make gaming accessories uh my name is eric i'm with the finder film podcast uh we talk about movies and such and i will be playing al shay the hunter hi my name is pete i'm from middle class film class a movie podcast and i will be playing the bard named armand asante a little on the nose but my name is fernando um, I will be playing Sir Ferdinand the Violet Knight, and <laughs> I am a free-range, old-school Dungeons & Dragons player. Hi, I'm John. I'll be playing Cromlin the Grey Wanderer, a learned sorcerer. Uh, like my friend Nando, I have been role-playing for many a long time. No current projects, but uh, possibly doing a gaming podcast with uh, our game master here down the line. <laughs> and speaking of which, uh, my name is Will Lindis. I'll be running the game today. Uh, you can catch me each week on the Movie Bears podcast, where we review films, both current and classic. All right. I think it's time to dive in to some tabletop role-playing, everyone. Our adventure will now begin. You find yourselves at a tavern where many roads meet. Almost one year ago to the day, each of you was visited by the mysterious Green Knight. Although you were miles apart, it seems that these visits occurred simultaneously. You all harmed the Green Knight in some way, with the Knight's promise that he would return the damage done to him one year hence. Now, shortly before that year is up, you meet at the beginning of your journey. Over the course of the night, you exchange stories. You agree to go on this quest to the Green Chapel together. Some party members may be a bit more begrudgingly than the others. The night passes with anxious revelry. Then, in the stark morning light, you get the first clear look at the other members of your party. You will face your destinies together. I'd like to take a moment and have each character do a quick introduction of themselves. Um, this is a spot for us to get a uh, to paint the mental picture of who we see in our adventuring party. Um, as we go around the table, I'd like to hear everyone give a brief description of their character, as well as maybe one interesting fact that we may have learned about that character from the uh, current night, the previous night's revelry, be it something they shared or maybe something they uh, we we observed from them uh, during their revelry. Uh, we'll go in the same order. Uh, Alana, if you'd like to go first. So um, she's not quite tall. Um, red hair. Um, she's of noble birth and she tends to talk down to a lot of people, but when things get interesting, she gets really involved. Um, the one thing that the revelries would have uh, revealed about her is that she's got friends all over in high and low places. All right. Uh, next up, 
I want to hear about Alshea. Alshea likes uh, smoked cheese and uh, playing music that he uh, calls hollow notes. I know with us here sounds like a bit of an anachronism, but he didn't know that he was thousands of years ahead of his time. I'd spend a lot of time by myself hunting. Um, I've recently started a family and my wife became very sick and I'm left to tend to her and our child, but uh, I, I was able to sneak out uh, tonight and get some drinks. So um, I'm gonna cut loose a little bit. I love it. Um, well, let's hear about Armand. So uh, Armand is a is a uh, carefree bard who left home at the ripe old age of 14, drawn by the lure of the gypsy caravan and uh, living a life of leisure and a carefree fun, uh, but left when he realized that the gypsies held different virtues than he did, and he, he basically became a roaming bard, living his own life. Well, next up, we've got Sir Ferdinand. Uh, yes, Sir Ferdinand, the Violet Knight. In the morning, he, he would still be wearing um, his armor that he was wearing the, the night before. It's a, a full set of armor, and uh, depicted on it is a purple flower on his chest and shield. A long sword is also scabbarded at his side. In the festivities um, and in his drink, um, Sir Ferdinand is known to be a generous if not proud man. Sir Ferdinand, although not the strongest, he is swift with a sword and uh, it's landed him in a bit of trouble. There you go. And then that leaves us with Cromlin the Grey Wanderer. Cromlin is an aged man in well-traveled robes. His face is weathered from the wind. He has piercing eyes that linger on those that interest him. And yes, it's just as creepy as it sounds. He has a beard and hair, uh, wreathing those features like a fog-filled morn. He waves aside any offer of wine, uh, instead probably sharing tea with Armand. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Perfect. All right. After taking stock of uh, your allies, you make your preparations and you begin on your trek. You know roughly where it is that you're heading. You just have to get there. Only a few hours into your journey, the familiarity of the tavern, let alone your homes, has faded long into the distance. The woods on this path are like nothing you've seen before. Mysteriously gnarled branches, dark foreign shadows, and a cold wind surround you. You're focusing so much on just the eeriness that you almost don't notice the overturned cart right in front of you. The cart looks to have been the subject of an ambush. Arrows stick out of the side of the cart. Peasant bodies litter the road. The scene is quiet, maybe too quiet. What will you do? And this is where we do our very first authority check. This is how we do our initiative. So uh, this is uh, roll a d20, uh, and you will add your, um, if you are trained in courage, you get to add a plus two. And if you're trained in authority, you get to add an additional plus two. Once you have those numbers, tell me what they are. I have an eight. Yeah, yeah, I rolled a four, so I also get an eight. Okay. Woo! Oh. Our first 20. Starting off hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be all ones from here on out. <laughs> I rolled a 14, no modifiers. Okay. 15. 15. Okay. So let me just write those down so I remember them. And since we have a tie on the eighth initiative modifier, uh, it sounds like you had the higher um, uh, skills on that, Ferdinand. So I'll have you going before uh, Armand on that tie. So here we go. Um, so um, first of all, we're at the beginning of an encounter and uh, the beginning of an encounter and the same with every beginning of each um, uh, full turn in the rotation, it represents a waylay from your um, journey to meet the Green Knight. So everyone, please take one dishonor. And when I say that, I mean, uh, currently your score should be set to 10, the beginning of the adventure. Everyone gets bumped up to 11 now. 
I'm going to use a D20 to mark that. That's actually really good. <laughs> um, all right. So since we're at the, uh, it, on everybody's turn, you get to make one action, which usually represents like a thing that you're doing, a skill check, something along those lines. Uh, since you're at the very, very top, Alshea, um, please tell me what action you would like to take. I'm going to uh, uh, just kind of look around the area, um, see if there's uh, any danger afoot. Ah, okay. Use my I... uh, use my huntery skills to. Uh, um, yeah, you uh, typically seeing arrows sticking in the side of an overturned cart leads me to believe something bad happened. Let's assess the situation. Look for clues, gang. Very good. I think this is going to be a vigilance um, check to sort of study the surroundings. So give me a. Uh, and um, if you're doing that, uh, I'm I'm gauging that that's an honorable action, so you get to roll that as honorable. So roll d20. Uh, you have the option to add, um, of course, if you're trained in vigilance, uh, or if you have an ability score of, if you have cunning as one of your abilities. Um, I do. Okay. So, and you want to get equal to or higher than that 11 score. Okay. So it's whatever I roll plus two for the cunning. Yes. Okay. Uh, 10 plus 2 is 12, which is higher than 11. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, um, drawing to a stop, uh, the group of you takes in the scene in front of you and all share um, familiar with the uh, <laughs> what this type of thing might be, uh, stops the group and scans uh, the area. Um, you actually, in doing this, you spot a rustling in the bushes uh, and start to notice uh, several figures were actually hiding in the forest. By the look of the ones that are a little bit closer to you, um, they seem to be emaciated and in pretty rough shape. Now, they haven't noticed you yet, uh, and no weapons are drawn. They okay. haven't noticed us? Yeah. They look, it doesn't look from, from what you see here. Um, that they've noticed you. Looks as though they are um, looking, they were kind of looking in at the scene, uh, emaciated and... Um, it, they uh, look like the zombies from um, I Am Legend. Uh, maybe not quite <laughs> like the zombies from I Am Legend, but maybe pretty close. They, they, uh, uh, do, do they look dangerous? Um, like, do, they, do they look like they could have flipped over a, uh, a cart? Uh, I'm guessing I'll say emaciated doesn't really... I will say that that part is hard to tell. Uh, I when I say emaciated, I don't want you to think that they're just like fully skin and bones. But I don't. I gotcha. also don't think of them as too swarthy either. Gotcha. They're a little gaunt. They're like Doug Jones. All right. That brings us to the next person's turn, and that is going to be uh, Alana. What are you going to do? All right. Well, I want to uh, look to see, um, like, how long they've been dead, and then maybe where the arrows came from. Okay. Um, yes. Um, so you go forth to, um, um, so you're going to go kind of like check out the, you know, check out the scene in more detail. Um, I think that there are a couple of different things that we can do here. Uh, but the one that I feel like is most appropriate here uh, is going to be a, give me a reason check. Um, mm -hmm. I think that what you're doing, yeah, yeah, sort of like you're kind of putting the clues together. Right. Well, to 16, I get a plus two, so that's 18. Okay, wonderful. Um, yeah, so uh, that's definitely a success. Um, yes, um, so taking all of this uh, together, um, you, this definitely looks to be uh, uh, one, uh, this is very obviously an ambush. If there was any like question about that before, these arrows were definitely very purposefully fired uh, from uh, the sides. Um, you see all of the arrows seem to be very directional in that um, it doesn't seem to be pelting kind of like all over. It seems to be kind of on either sides of the uh, cart as they're kind of like punctured in. Uh, and it looks as though um, the um, peasants themselves, uh, the dead peasants, uh, do not have uh, any uh, weapons of their own or anything along those lines. Um, you just see, um, you know, they, they, they look as though they're just, just, they were just shot and murdered. Um, Can I tell how long ago? 
Ah, yes. Uh, this looks very fresh. This looks very fresh. Uh, okay. This was probably done, you know, you, you would imagine that this was done within this day. Well, I'll just say quietly that um, the, uh, the ambush looks new. We should stay, you know, fresh and look and pay attention. And shortly after you do that, um, kind of looking over this wreckage, uh, the two of you sort of spotting, uh, I would say that um, definitely um, uh, Alshea, um, you would notice this sort of first, uh, the other sort of like in turn right after, because those figures that were sort of hiding in the forest on either side, um, they actually stand and emerge uh, into the clearing. Um, and uh, a voice yells out from one of them as they do it, and he says, Halt! He's a tall, cloaked figure who's exiting the brush. You wandered through the wrong woods, Abby told Rhodes and the like. The man, he eyes your weapons and your armor. I'll tell you what, though. If you can uh, help us with a little task, uh, we'll not only let you pass through for free, eh, but also toss in a little something special. He uh, looks the man over. And uh, he's going to uh, try to divine his intent. Um, Studying him carefully as uh, he answers his uh, question. <clears throat> and what is it that you would have of us? Um, so first of all, give me a intuition skill. Intuition, I think, is going to be your check there. And let's see. Uh, and to uh, so if intuition, it is uh, if you're trained in intellect. No, I'm sorry, not intellect. Um, cunning. Uh, if you have a if your ability score if is if is cunning, then you get a plus two. If you have intuition, you get an additional plus two. All right, that will be a total of fifteen. Okay, that is a success. You all are doing very well on these honorable skill checks so far. Um, cool. The man continues as you ask, answer that. He says. Well, as you can see, there's some people who don't agree with these talks. He gestures to the destroyed cart. But law is what we say it is. Some people got no respect, no real honor to them to uphold the law, you know? <laughs> In fact, we were just uh, tracking down one of the folks that was traveling with these lawbreakers. When you come by, if you can find him and bring him back to us and we'll give you this Jenkins get it for me and he could, one of the other guys comes over lugging a um an engraved mace uh and he hands it over to the lead guy who uh grasps it and it's sort of like heavy in his hand um you, you know it actually like looks to have some some real heft to it but he holds it back up, kind of shows it off. Um, you know, you get to see kind of like the um, the craftsmanship on it, the engraving on it. He ran off that way. He tries to gesture with the mace itself to the woods, um, but it seems a bit heavy. So he just ends up uh, changing plans and cocking his head instead. If you'll go get him, mace is yours. Eh, might want to hustle, though. He ran off kind of quick. Cromlin, you're definitely getting the vibe that this guy is lying. This guy is, there's there's some sort of deception that is happening here. Um, and I think, Alana, you're able to pick up on part of why that is, too. You know, they're talking about these um, these peasants being lawbreakers and, you know, no respect for the law and all of that. But um, when you were looking things over, you didn't, they, it's not, you don't see any weapons drawn on the, uh, the, the peasants. You just see a bunch of dead people with arrows sticking out of them essentially actually you know before we we say what the action is i will let you all take a moment kind of to to do some cross role play if there's anything you all want to discuss uh about this because yeah so are uh, we are we going to help this douchebag is that, yeah. the, is that the plan <laughs> so uh, this is olden times me. it's le douchebag yeah. <laughs> the, the douche uh, uh boda <laughs> so um 
yeah, uh, they uh, we're, are, we're pretty like much it, in agreement that we don't agree or that we don't trust the thing this guy says. Sh- sure, but so should we, But there's but clearly uh, lying. Yeah, there's. Uh, do you think he's lying about a guy out there, or is he just trying to get us away from here? Oh no, I think there's probably someone out there, but mm-hmm. I don't think he was the attacker. Yeah, I think he was one a survivor of the attack. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Um, should we find the person? Um, and if we should do that, shall we leave these people alone? Or shall yeah. we deal with these people, then go find the person that ran off? My, I, I, my, I'm, I'm, yeah, not my really, I'm not really digging this situation. No, my, my gut instinct would be to make basically double cross these crooks that we just met, accept, accept the challenge to go find the, this gentleman, but don't not with the intent to kill him. We we'll let the bandits know that that's the intent, but we won't. If we do find him, we won't kill him. That's that would be my suggestion to the group. I believe we should meet out justice. Those, these men were unarmed. There will undoubtedly be more travelers along these roads. If there's to be any stop to this bloodshed, it's us that uh, we'll need to put a stop to it. And perhaps we can help whatever poor fellow ran off into the woods as well. So Sir Ferdinand actually takes a step forward in front of everybody else. And uh, he kind of brings his shield up, you know, in a more comfortable position. uh, And he draws his sword. And uh, he says, uh, your story stinks. Lay down your weapons. Here's where I have to think about whether uh, intimidation is going to be an honorable or a dishonorable act. Well, in uh, this uh, in this context, yeah. yeah, seems it seems to be the honorable, unless they turned out we turned out to be the baddies the whole time. Yeah, I'm trying to I guess avoid a fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, instead of uh, I will let I'm of, I'm gonna let that one be uh I'm gonna let that one be honorable. Uh, I think intimidation is one of those ones that's generally coded as into, as dishonorable, but I think that given the exact motive, I think that this falls under honorable. So, okay. yeah. Excellent. Uh, I rolled an 11 total. Okay. Uh, you had to get an 11 or higher, so you succeed. Ooh. Uh, all Ooh. right. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, your sword drawn, your allies behind you, uh, the the front guy um, <laughs> says, "Oh, hold up here." <laughs> he says, um, I'll "Tell you what, uh, let's just let's just do this the easy way." Yeah. Um, he takes uh, and he has like a um, sort of like a a, a, a large um, actually more like a short sword uh, at his side, and he draws it, but like up. Uh, like drops it down to the dirt. Uh, the other men uh, who uh, are behind you, and you count that there are um, um, that there are a total of uh, honestly, there's a total of five of them. So the other four, uh, you see, um, uh, do the same. Uh, you see, you know, club go down into the ground. One of them like looks to the side, and goes that. Eh. Drops two daggers, um, a spear goes down, and another sword. Uh, they do that, and he says, We didn't want any trouble. He says, Well, he's just trying to collect the toll. He says, it's Good honorable work, he says, but <sighs> no trouble, no trouble. As they look you over to sort of figure out what you're going to do with them, we then shift over to the next person in the initiative order, which is Armand. Armand is uh, very appreciative of fine craftsmanship, and he wants that mace. <laughs> so, can I, can I, collect the mace? Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that part's pretty easy. You can just okay. pick up the mace. I wasn't sure if there was a decision on there or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gets cursed. <laughs> Rolling that twenty. <laughs> um, that part really? is pretty easy, and it, since it's not a skill check, um, it doesn't um, it doesn't take your action. I will tell you what the engraved mace do, does. Um, you know, whoever it is that ends up keeping it, um, and if it be you, whoever, um, it will grant you uh, a plus two on all uh, melee combat rolls used with it. All right. Cool. And it's shiny, right? It is very shiny, yeah. All right. Super shiny. 
Um, so then I guess at this point, I, uh, <clears throat> give me a good character. Wow. That was crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you think those guys have money in their pockets? And then I, I, I go to investigate, not necessarily steal money from them, but look in their pockets. Ah. Okay, yeah. Um, I think that this is going to be, uh, give me a, uh, so I can do vigilance. I think that's going to be vigilance. Uh, yeah, give me a vigilance. Okay, so I have cunning as my, one of my skills or abilities. And let's see if I have, I do not have vigilance. Okay, so that's plus two, right? Um, actually, before I have you do this. Yeah. This is going to be vigilance, but this is going to be dishonorable. I figured. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, so, <laughs> hey, no harm in looking, right? Yeah. Um, so it's um, so here's what's going to happen. Um, first of all, um, you will um, uh, you want to roll your I think it's right now eleven. You want to roll yeah. under that uh, when you roll your d twenty instead of adding the plus two, you can subtract huh. the two. Um, okay. So. Um, so I'll have to, I'll basically do my natural roll minus two was going to be my score. Yes. Okay. And you want to get 11 or under. Oh boy. Or under. Yes. I want to, I want to do it lower. Okay. Yeah. The more dishonorable you are, the easier it is to do dishonorable things. Cause you have your, the meter goes up this way and then kind of vice versa. Uh, okay. So actions. 11, let's see. 13. Nah. So Good. 11. Perfect. Okay. So that's a success. Um, you will still gain a point of dishonor because you're doing okay. a dishonorable act. Um, so um, uh, you'll bump yours up to 12. Everyone else is still at 11. It's not shared. Gotcha. Uh, when you go th- like kind of like go to the f- first guy uh, and go through his uh, uh, pouch, you see, um, yeah, I mean, you do see um, uh, several coins, a uh, few pieces of jewelry, um, nothing too extravagant. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. look like these is like the crown jewel or anything like that. Um, but you do see, um, you know, for example, I think you see like uh, some coins, you see a uh, kind of a simple like silver chain and you do see like a lady's brooch. Okay. And he's, he's the only one carrying any goods. Uh, when you check the others, I think you see uh, similar, but maybe like uh, a little bit less so uh, in that it looks as though uh, the, the one that was speaking had the, um, had had more i guess on yeah he's the uh, lead guy he but the others cut. the others do have a you know like the occasional like kind of like ring or um something along those lines um but again like okay. nothing that feels like uh it's not like like rubies or gems or anything like that okay um and can i add on to that action in what way let me know what I, you want. I want to um i believe that uh, this money found in their pockets could go to paying for flowers for the widows of the deceased and I relieve them of all of their money except for one coin. Okay. Yeah. So you, um, yeah, you take uh, all of those things, and uh, there's some like mutters and protests from the guys. Is that? Oh, oh, are we? Are, are, we, are we gonna? We can just pick yeah. flowers. Yeah. Are, are we gonna do this? Oh, by the way, Sir Ferdinand, I really appreciate you doing that, man. This is so much easier when they don't have weapons. <clears throat> yeah, he, he actually isn't. He's like, they're ill-gained goods. This is definitely a sign of their guilt. <laughs> like he doesn't get it. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> we're robbing these guys. God was uh, it. I think one of them, like, it looks like he's just sort of like, should we just fought these guys? Uh, and the, the one up front says, uh, says, who I think is probably a little bit closer to Ferdinand's um, uh, sword. Uh, since you, I'm guessing, still have it kind of like held yeah. out. Uh, yeah. He looks like just down the, the 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 length of what probably looks like the longest sword that he's ever seen in his life. Uh, longer even more than, you know, by virtue of just how close it is to striking him down. He says, eh, you know, I think we can call this one a loss. <laughs> uh, we are back around to the top of the next initiative round. So I'm going to ask you all this. Uh, more specifically, uh, I'm going to ask Alshea this because you're the authority leader on this. Um, do you feel as though you have accomplished what you set out to do here? Or do you have more actions that you want to take? If oh. you take more actions, everyone will gain a point of dishonor. Um, you know, just, you know. Yeah. But- um, I, I, I don't want to give everyone dishonor, but I think uh, we need to find um, 
I think we need to. Th- th- does this count uh, towards finding the uh, guy, the runaway guy? Yeah, if you want to do that, that's still within this encounter. So okay, that would be your action. Yeah. Um, I I, I want to do another uh, uh, action then. Okay, perfect. So everyone gain a point of dishonor, and tell me which action you'd like to take. Okay, uh, before I do, um, the the uh, dead people in the cart, are there any of them women or children? Um, yes. Okay, uh, I'm going to grab no, no the... No children, uh, but women, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's it's very clear that they were unarmed and attacked and not defending themselves or fighting or... Absolutely. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna, uh, call the leader over. It's like, can you follow me for a second? Uh course <laughs> all right i'm gonna uh, i'm going to uh, uh get to where there's the dead bodies and point to the ground and go so this looks like a slaughter and there's a man ran away that you wanted us to hunt down what's going on where is this person and what did you intend to do with them I think that feels like what you're trying to do is you're trying to. I don't feel like you're intimidating him right now. Uh, it could be persuasion. Per- persuasion. Too. So give me. A uh, persuasion. The, the, this is this is more like, I know you're lying, and I'm dropping all the bullshit. What's yeah. going on? Ah, then, then maybe intimidation does make the most sense here because I think you know I I think that is a very direct a, a direct yeah. statement here. Um, so give me that. Um, I'll let it keep within the um the honorable um kind of off of the logic from before so um give me an honorable intimidation check i <laughs> uh, got 11 plus 2 so that brings me to 13 okay um so that does succeed all right he says we're not to all collect this i think it's time i came clean on that which is probably sounds a little bit like a no shit statement to everyone that sort of pieced all of this <laughs> together but uh he says it anyways we was just trying to collect a little bit of coin for ourselves. Just a little. Just something to, you know. He says, look at me, men. He says, they haven't been eating right. He says, he says, certainly not going to be eating well now. <laughs> he kind of looks at his very, like, uh, empty uh, uh, bag. He says, but, yeah, um, one of the fellas done ran away into the woods he says it was just one of them so <laughs> he looks around he says you don't have to go after him if you don't want <laughs> all right so uh just to uh respond to him kill all these people yeah they got swords at your neck yeah you're penniless yeah to what in? Hey, to be fair, it's got me fuck all. Should maybe we have these guys help us look for the guy, or have him carry our shit? There you go. <laughs> well, Alana has an idea. Uh, that's perfect, actually, because we are over to Alana's turn too. So you can set up your idea before uh, before our next action happens. So, yeah, what would you? What's your idea? So she knows a lot of people. And um, sh- so I, I, I'll go up to um, the leader and say, you know, if it is coin you are looking for, there are better ways to achieve this. Well, we shot our hands at a foreman. Well, three of us said, land's dead, or at least land's dying. So it's, I could put the work in now, but that won't feed me tonight. So go into the town. I have a friend there named Badger. Right. Hey. You can't miss him. Big guy. He'll have work for you. Tell him Alana sent you. Hey, he's not like a constable or a <clears throat> headsman or anything, right? Not that type of work. No, no, it's hard labor. You'll be moving um, merchandise from place to place. Right. 
All right, uh, let's see. I think what we're going to have here, this feels actually like an authority role. Um, you are using um, uh, status and um, connections, uh, I think. Uh, yeah. So give me an authority check. All right. And that is an 18. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. That's it, that your performance felt like an 18 authority. <laughs> <laughs> they um, do it. He says, mind if I sidebar? And he slowly backs over to where the guys are and they have a bit of a, 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 a talking to. Uh, one of them um, says something a little bit loudly and gets immediately cuffed on the back of the head by this one. Uh, um, and uh, after all of that, he comes back over and says, uh, all right, we'll, We'll give this a try. He says, we're not afraid of a little bit of hard labor. He says, especially if um, the pay, or pay is right. And he says, given the circumstances, I think that it's probably our best option. They don't, do you, um, do you gesture for them to head that way now? Or do you want them to um, uh, stick around a little bit before you do? Before you oh, start? no, I'll tell them. Get a move on. Go. They, off they, you go, with, off you go. with a hustle in their step, um, you know, they, they sort of do that motion where they're sort of like power walking, like, uh, down the trail. Uh, once they get a little further, kind of looking over their shoulder, they, all right. And they move a little bit hastily, but they are going the direction of the town. Um, and, uh, now it's just you, the car, the peasants. Friends. Brothers and sisters. Who can regale me and my queen with some myth? Or tale? O oh, greatest of kings, let one of your knights Try to land a blow against me. Indulge me in this game. I will be deep. Goblin takes his uh, water skin and he cups his hand and pours some of the water into his hand. He then moves his other hand over the top and gazes into the reflection of the water. And he's going to try to scry uh, the location of this uh, fellow who ran off and uh, find out oh, where he is and what condition he's in. Complete, just, just, just wearing the same style of like peasant garb uh, that you see uh, on the, the the people here in front of you. Um, he looks to be in um, pretty rough shape. In that um, you see him in a, a bush. Um, it looks as though um, he has a. It doesn't look grievous, but it does look as though that he, he does have a wound across his arm that he seems to be holding. Uh, you also see he is, um, he looks to be shivering from just the cold, which um, you all had had noticed too, like just this area feels like, um, like the mist and the fog that's sort of like setting on, like as soon as you get into the tree line, uh, the cold feels very oppressive and hits to the bone. Uh, but in addition to seeing that vision, you get a clear spot of where it's at. You could just go to him uh, with without any issue uh, because of your vision. Okay. I see him. There. He's alone, cold and injured. You traipse through the woods, um, and uh, it's hard going. Uh, you, um, he, even though you caught it in the vision where he was at, it feels further than um it it feels uh, it, it 
it is further, I guess, than it maybe felt in the vision. Uh, even you all being, I guess, a little bit more hardy sort um, are a bit winded by the time that you get there. Um, this man seemed to have been running uh, quite a far distance before he found his hiding spot. Sure enough, though, um, you see uh, from the bushes uh, very haphazardly uh, hiding. Uh, you see him uh, very clearly as you emerge on the scene. Um, the same man, injury on the arm, shivering in the cold. He looks up, eyes wide as soon as he sees the group of you. Don't. Don't bring me back. And it is Ferdinand's turn in the uh, initiative. Yeah. <clears throat> he sees uh, the man um, there and, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, he has a, a concerned look on his face. Um, and uh, seeing that the man is cold, um, he pulls off of his uh, purple cloak uh, and he kind of makes a, a gesture to the man kind of to say, he says, you're cold. He says, here, take this. The others, all of them, they're... <laughs> they've, all, grimly. They, they've all been, uh, they've all been slaughtered. As they're saying this, um, Alana will go up to Armand and say, I know you have a flask. Give him the gold and let him take a swig. These woods are far, long and dark. Says we try not to go through them if we don't have to, but we had to. So we were heading to town. We figured we could sell a few things get enough coin to get us through at least the next few months. I, sh I should have made the travel by myself. Or, but they came out, told us that if we didn't pay up, that they'd strike us down. And then well, we didn't have much. And we couldn't afford to give them anything. You see, if we gave them anything, we'd have nothing. And if we had nothing, then all of this would have been for nothing. And so they fired on us, bows which they kept hidden in the woods. But but I, I got I got free. One sliced at me, but I'll, I'll be fine. But when I ran, I looked back as soon as I could and catch my breath to see who had made it out with me. But it was just me. It was just me and the brambles and... And I was too afraid to go back. Well, Armand um, <clears throat> walks up to the lone survivor, puts his hand on his shoulder. Very sorry for your loss. I don't have much for family, and I'm, I know how hard it is to let yours go. This won't bring them back, but take the money that they've stolen and all their goods they had. Make sure to collect your belongings on your way back out. I speak for our team when I say we would travel with you for safe passage, but we have other pressing events to attend to. Indeed we do. Since you left those children and those women to die, you ran here into this forest. He kind of shakes his head. <clears throat> he says, <laughs> this is the coward's way. You can keep that cloak. So I've given away all of my worldly goods. Relax your ire, Armand. <laughs> yeah, he kind of no knight. What a peasant. <clears throat> yeah, I, bah. yeah, he just kicks the snow at his feet and turns around. So uh, as you um, uh, press on through the woods, you make your way past the wreckage, and you begin to wonder, you know, did you actually make the world a bit of a better place, or did you just, just displace the violence? You won't know for some time to come, but at least you know that you did what you thought was right. Uh, let's go over our honorable and dishonorable results and see where we land. You found uh, this man, and you gave him supplies and protection. Um, that gives you minus one dishonor, and that's for everyone. You've eliminated the bandits as a threat. That gives you minus one dishonor. Trying to interpret the thievery. Yes, I very much am. <laughs> I very much am. <laughs> because I could very much go both ways on that one. I fell ass backwards into uh, uh, good graces there. <laughs> uh, I will say this. I will say this. You gave them like all of like the like the kind of the trinket jewelry and the coins, right? Yes. The only thing I kept out of the encounter was the mace. Very fair. 
Um, I am going to give just Armand plus one dishonor. Armand's at <laughs> even, finally. <laughs> Back so, to yeah. zero. Yeah, yeah. so, um, yep. So, uh, yeah, so everyone should get minus two total, except for Armand, who gets minus one total. All right, that's it for our show today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And remember, we're going to be back very, very soon for another adventure as our heroes venture closer to their meeting with the Green Knight. <laughs> <laughs>